It's easy to feel overwhelmed if you face a very long to-do list every day. Hi, I'm Dave Edwards. Our to-do lists can sometimes get very long, and that means that every day we have to make decisions about what we should be working on right now. As part of my continuing conversations with David Allen, the author of Getting Things Done, I asked him if he had any advice to help us make that daily decision. I was, I was uh, actually just uh, reinventing my task lists. I'm migrating from one system to another, which is a nightmare onto its own. And it, and it really got me thinking about, you know, I have all of these tasks in front of me and I have to make a decision every day as to what I'm going to do next. Now, some things have deadlines, so they come screaming out at me that I got to work on things. But what advice do you have uh, for me and others when you look at your to-do list and everything seems important and you've got to make those decisions as to what you're going to work on next? I, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, at this point in my life, age 76, I have to trust my gut, my liver, my spirit, my, my God knows what I trust when I try to listen to the little voice that says, David, which one of these things would be the coolest, most fun, most strategic, most relieved pressure on you to do. And all of those are criteria I use. So, and, and I come up with different answers <laughs> for each one of those criteria. You know, as I said, you know, a guy who sort of followed me along and big Hollywood producer said he liked to do, once he got the next action concept, he said he chose the next action that was the most fun because that got his energy going, got his juicers rolling and whatever. Uh, and then, you know, a friend of mine, Tony Schwartz, you know, sort of popularized the idea of how to get maximum energy, eat the, eat the frog first. It's just like, look, the ugliest thing that, that, that has got the most thing you're resisting, do that first. And then you can snack on email the rest of the day or <laughs> do whatever you want to do, you know, to get that one out of the way. And I do both. I do either kind of whichever one I feel like doing at that point. So I hate to give a, such a simplistic answer, but I, just, I do what I feel like doing. Yeah, but my fear, maybe my, fear I can, is, my fear is with that approach, I'm always going to do the fun, easy things and may avoid the thing that, that, that really is yeah, yeah. important. And at some point, that thing will come back on you where you're going to feel like you better friggin' handle that. So that'll be the thing, that'll be the thing you feel like doing right mm -hmm. otherwise let it fall off the radar why do you think it was that important yeah well i have noticed that there are things that i put on my my action list that uh when i finally get to them i went hey, you know this doesn't seem so important or i've discovered somebody <laughs> else has taken care of it oh come on well dave maybe not i don't know if at 76 i'm going to be smarter or dumber tomorrow but I imagine at your age, you'll be a little smarter, a little more mature tomorrow than you are today. So don't, don't put anything in concrete in terms of what you think is most strategic or what you most need to do. I mean, that's my advice. Like, do what you feel like doing. Now, what you feel like doing is going to change based upon the context of circumstances. Obviously, if you've got a deadline of something, and you're avoiding it, avoiding it, avoiding it. At some point, they're going to go. We're going to, we're, we're going to actually, you know, cancel your check if you don't do this by by Friday. Then what you feel like doing is not going and playing computer games. You're going to feel like making sure you get that check. Yeah. Right. So it's really about evaluating what are the what's the value I'm going to get out of completing this or doing this, and. Uh, and just wait and pay attention. So it, that little thing that has your attention and says you should do this, I don't have any formula for that. You know, we've done the best we could to sort of define these different horizons, say, well, what are you doing in your life? What's your vision of success? And what are your goals? And what are the things you need to manage? And what are your projects, et cetera? So defining the six horizons of your commitments and having all that objectified and out in front of you it's going to make it a lot easier, but it still doesn't, doesn't make that choice for you. Mm -hmm. It makes it a lot easier to make that choice in a trusted way, 
says, look, I just feel like having a beer or a martini or, or having a nap or meditating or walking the dogs right now. Right. You know, because right. I need to think, you know, and so anybody who's going to give you a formula that's going to give you the, the exact thing you need to do or any software that you think you're going to buy that's going to tell you exactly what you need to do when, you know, you're crazy. It'll never happen. Mm -hmm. it's always going to be the human factor inside your own consciousness and its sophistication or its maturity or your evolution you know have, is going to just determine that what what that voice is and how much attention you pay to it so obviously you're at the the stage of life where you don't have a boss who's standing over you and and, and telling you what to do but uh, uh have, well, I know for you, don't, you don't have you don't have you don't you don't have two dogs like I do and a wife like I do. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I stand and an, edit, and, an edit, and an editor for and a co-author of a new book. But okay, no, I get it. Not like not like most people at age forty-eight or thirty-two or fifty-six. But you've sure. always said that 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 a, a, approach not to use is kind of the old-fashioned prioritization of abc or one two three why right. not there's no wrong there's nothing wrong with those dave come on go ahead list them abc list them priority one two three four five just don't just don't hang yourself up if you don't pay attention to what that then educates you about it mm -hmm. may it may teach it, it may help mature your thinking so all of those little models help mature your thinking well come on you know, pull out any one of your action lists right now and say, hey, come on, Dave, tell me which one of those is going to give you the highest value if it's done right now. Mm -hmm. I remember initially right. when, when I was really getting into the uh, deciding that I really had to be more productive, I found that the Eisenhower matrix really kind of at least gave me guidance to look at things. Remind me about that. I know I've I, I knew other before. Well, it, it, it's it's a it's a quadrant and it's about putting things like what's most important, what will you know, what's yeah, it's prioritizing what's most important to get done and uh, by what priority. It's it's just a very simple matrix. Yeah, well, like ABC or like any of right. all, all those things are for sure. But we're asleep on that. Do you need to sleep? I I, I do. Well, where where does that fit in the quadrant? Oh, that's that's not even on the quadrant. Well, then. If you got stuff that's not even on the quadrant, you know what the frig of importance is the quadrant. Yeah, to decide no, what you do moment to moment. Now I get it. I get what it is, and it's good stuff. You know, it was Covey's. Although Covey didn't make it up, but he did popularize it. It's kind of like the the matrix of important, not important, urgent, not urgent. Mm -hmm. yeah, I get that. That's great. Great way to think about that. There's nothing wrong with that thinking at all, unless it makes you, unless you don't do what you think you should have done with that, and you did something else that didn't, that you think didn't fit that model, and then you feel guilty and frustrated. So well, many people have, sense. so many people have responded to our conversations that say that you're, you know, you're very zen about this whole, whole approach that, that when they first read your book, they think it's kind of dogmatic, but then when they talk to you, you you take a much more laid back uh, uh, approach to this. Um, it, it doesn't well, I, well let, let, let me stop you there. When you say I take a much more laid back approach, I had a laid back approach from the time I wrote the book. I don't know what's not laid back about the book. You know, maybe somebody needs to communicate to me what, what they read in there that they think this is not laid back. This is not, hey, relax. You know, here are all the things that make that clear your head clearing your head's a cool thing to do you know and whatever you need to do to do that you know well i'm not uh, sure i'm not sure what i said in in all of my work well i i, I get that people misinterpret or mis may misappropriate whatever i wrote about that well let me theorize I, about I, that let me theorize that that maybe it's not what you wrote it's maybe that people were looking and are looking for a set of rules that will make us all suddenly more productive. Well, it's not a set of rules. It's a set of practices that will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it, tell me what those practices say. Don't relax. Don't chill. 
No, I, I, I think that since I have been following these steps, um, I'm less nervous about uh, forgetting things or not getting important things done because I now have everything in one place and it's not all sitting here. If you don't want to make any commitments, <laughs> relax, you know? I, I didn't say anything in the book that would take that away. It just talked about, hey, if you've got commitments, you better, you damn well better acknowledge what they are. Otherwise, they're going to take a spin in your consciousness that's going to, you know, eat up cognitive space and keep you from being as free as you want to be. David Allen is the author of Getting Things Done, and it's my privilege to talk to him periodically and share those conversations with you. If you have a question about GTD or productivity that you'd like me to ask David, I'd love to have your question. Just send me an email, daveedwards at outlook.com. And please hit the subscribe button and the like button to encourage me to make more videos about GTD.